Hello students, uh, myself Mehul Kodia from LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. So in last session, we saw some numerical based on uh, stiffness of spring. So in today's session, we have to solve some numerical based on structural problem of FEA using elimination approach. So uh, we have a total two methods to solve any of the FEA problem. First one that is elimination approach and second one that is penalty approach. So first we have to solve a uh, uh, FEA numerical using elimination approach. Okay, so that is the first numerical. So example number one, that is a step metallic bar with circular cross section consists of two segments. Means we have total two elements. The first segment is a length of 350 mm. Means length of element number one, L1 is equal to 350 mm and cross sectional area 275 mm square means uh, element length of element 1 that is 350 mm and cross sectional area of element 1 that is 275 mm square next the second segment is a length of 250 mm and cross sectional area 175 mm square so for the second element length of second element that is 250 mm and cross sectional area of second element that is 175 mm square okay. next the modulus of elasticity of bar material is 200 gigapascal now first of all we have to convert gigapascal unit into newton per mm square now as you all know 1 megapascal is equal to 1 newton per mm square okay but 1 gigapascal is equal to 10 raised to 3 megapascal so based on uh, this this concept we have to convert this unit into newton per mm square that means 200 gigapascal is equal to 200 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square okay so that is the modulus of elasticity capital Next, if the bar is fixed at one end and bigger section and subject to a tensile force of 700 kilo newton. Okay. Now, the first element is a fixed and uh, end of the second element we applied a tensile force and value of tensile force that is 700 kilo newton. Okay. So, a uh, smaller section determined now the displacement, second element stresses and third one the support reaction. So, in this numerical we have to find total three things. First one that is not a displacement that means we have to find out uh, if we applied uh, some load on this element so uh, how much uh, mm uh, displacement is occur at each knot okay second thing we have to find out that is a uh, element stresses means if you apply force in any of the body at that time that body try to deform clear so that's why we have to find out element stresses and last one support reaction means whatever support we given in this numerical we give support at knot 1 so as per Newton's third law, if you apply any of the force in any of the direction at that time, same force applied in opposite direction for the balancing purpose. That's why we have to find out the third one that is reaction forces. Okay. So this is the given data. Okay. Now we have to start how to solve this numerical. Okay. So step number one. First step that is a given data. You have to first of all list out all the given data. Okay. So first one length of element L1 350 mm. L2 length of second element 250 mm modulus of elasticity is same for both the material clear that's why uh, here we are we write down capital E is equal to 200 into 10 to 3 newton per mm square cross sectional area of element 1 a1 275 mm square cross sectional area of element 2 a2 that is 175 mm square and force applied at this uh, uh, second end of the second element that is 700 into so step number one discretization means in this step we have to identify that how how much uh, not available in the system so total three node is available in the system okay and we have to define element connectivity in this uh, step so first uh, we have to identify that that is total three node first node is fixed second node and third node we applied force at third node and here uh, we write down the element connectivity that means element number one mounted between node one and two element number two mounted between node two and three you can uh, visualize from this figure okay so this is the element one node one two and element two node two okay now step number two we have to uh, solve we have to if we have total number of elements two that's why we have to derive element stiffness matrix for the two element clear so in this numerical we have total two elements that's why we have to find out element matrix for the two elements so element number one 
Now we already derived the equation of the elements kiptes matrix that is k is equal to a1 e1 upon n1 in matrix 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. Okay, you can see in this uh, formula that is k1 is equal to a1 e upon l1 in matrix 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. So we already uh, starting of the numerical we list out data clear. So uh, we have to put that, that data over here. So instead of a1 we have to put 275 mm square instead of e. We have to put modulus of elasticity 200 into 10 raised to 3. In denominator, we have to write down length of element that is 350 mm. In matrix 1 minus 1 minus 1, minus 1 we have to write down as it is. Now, so we have to calculate that uh, denominator and numerator value and we have to take 10 raised to 4 as a common value and the uh, remaining value we have to multiply inside the bracket, clear, inside the matrix. So we have to write down as a common value 10 raised to 4 and remaining value that is 15.71 we have to multiply inside the matrix. So 15.75 uh, into 1 that is 15.71 minus 15.71 in second row minus 15.71 and 15.71 okay. This is the element stiffness matrix that's why we write down unit Newton per mm because what is stiffness? Stiffness means force per unit deflection. So unit of force that is Newton, unit, uh, unit of deflection that is mm. That's why we write down unit of element stiffness matrix that is Newton per mm. And also we give number of uh, row number and column number as a 1 to 1 to because element number 1 mounted between not 1 and 2. That's why we give column number as a 1 to and row number as a 1 to. Okay. Same way we have to find out uh, the answer of the element stiffness matrix for the element 2 using the same equation k2 is equal to a2 e upon l2 in bracket 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 put the value of a e and l1 uh, in this uh, uh, formula so instead of a2 you have to write down 175 instead of e we have to write down 200 into 10 raised to 3 in denominator we have to write down 250 that is the length of element 2 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 we have to write down as it is as a formula after that Again, we have to take 10 raised to 4 as a common value and remaining value we have to multiply inside the matrix. So, uh, the answer of uh, uh, element stiffness matrix of second element that is 10 raised to 4 in bracket 14 minus 14 in second row minus 14 to 14. Okay. Again, in this uh, element we give row number and column number as a 2, 3 and 2, 3 because element 2 mounted between not 2 and 3. Okay. So, that's why we have to write down over here. 2, 3 and 2, 3. Okay. So, this is the two elements. Okay. Now, we have to combine these two elements. This is called a global stiffness matrix. And you all know the size of global stiffness matrix is depend on number of nodes. So, in this numerical, we have total number of nodes 3. That's why the size of global matrix that is 3 cross 3. And how to combine two or uh, two matrix, you already know that. Okay. So, third step that is global stiffness matrix. So, k is equal to 10 raised to 4, we have to write down as it is because in both the matrix we take common value as a 10 raised to 4. In the bracket, this size, first we have to give number of row number and column number as a 1, 2, 3 and as a row number 1, 2, 3 and column number 1, 2, 3. Now, in the first element, we give number 1, 2 and 1, 2 and so in this uh, matrix, you have to put that 4 value over here, 15.71 minus 15.71 minus 15.71 and 15.71 in place of uh, first two column and first two row. Second element indicate a uh, second and third row and second and third column. So you have to put that value in this uh, matrix. So and uh, okay, uh, next step that is uh, you can also put second matrix and in corner point of the first matrix. Clear? And whenever any of the value is overlap at that time we have to give addition. Okay. So 15% plus 14, minus 14, minus 14 and 14. That indicates second row, second column and a second row, uh, second row, third row, third column. Okay. And one value is overlap. So at, at remaining uh, place we have to put as a 0. Okay. So the answer of global stiffness matrix that is k is equal to 10 raised to 4, 15.71, minus 15.71, 0. In second row, minus 15.71, 29.71. Minus 14 in third row 0 minus 14 and 4. Okay, so this is the uh, global stiffness matrix. Okay, now we have to identify that 
global load vector that means in each node how much force we apply okay so this is the diagram in this diagram first node is fixed that's why so we have to write down as a first node we have generated as a reaction force because fixed support always react uh, uh, react in from the uh, positive directional force in node 2 we not give any of the force in node 3 we applied 700 kN force so f is equal to r 0 and t3 1 to 3 indicate node 1 node 2 and node 3 so in node 1 uh, that is a reaction force is generated because that is a fixed support in node 2 we write down zero force because not in node 2 we don't give any of the external force in node 3 we applied 700 kN force so you have to write down instead of p3 we have to write down 700 and t3 that is the global load vector okay now we have to write down global nodal displacement vector means displacement at each node displacement at node 1 that is u1 displacement at node 2 that is u2 displacement at node 3 that is u3 okay so u1 u2 u3 now in this numerical we have to consider u1 is equal to 0 because node 1 is a fix if you apply any of the force uh, but node 1 the position of node 1 will not change that's why we have to consider as a uh, displacement at node 1 that is 0 now global stiffness, nodal displacement and load vector relationship that is kq au is equal to f stiffness k is equal to force per unit deflection so stiffness into deflection is equal to force so we already derived a global stiffness matrix we already derived displacement vector and we already derived force vector so you have to put, put down all the value over here okay so 10 raised to 4 and 15.71 minus 15.71 0 minus 15.71 29.71 minus 14 0 minus 14 and 14 that is the value of global stiffness matrix u indicate displacement vector so u1 u2 u3 is equal to r0 700 into 10 raised to 3 okay r indicate reaction force 0 means no, we not apply any of the force at not 2 and third 700 into 10 raised to 3 okay so global stiffness and nodal displacement and load vector relationship okay so in this uh, numerical we have to remove first row and first column because this in this numerical we solve using elimination approach in elimination approach we have to uh, use that this method whatever number of node is fixed that number of row and that number of column we have to remove from this matrix so in this matrix we have to remove first row and first column because in this numerical the first node is fixed and uh, displacement at first node that is zero that's why we have to remove first row and first column okay so uh, now we have to find out nodal displacement so you know, if we remove first row and first column from previous slide matrix then remaining matrix that is 10 raised to 4 29.71 minus 14 minus 14 14 u2 u3 is equal to 0 into 700 into 10 raised to 3 okay now from multiplication of first row and first column and second row and first column we I, uh, find out the two equation like 29.71 u2 minus 14 u3 is equal to 0 and uh, that is first equation second equation that is minus 14 u2 plus 14 u3 is equal to 70 now using Gauss elimination approach you have to uh, solve value of u2 and u3 okay so value of u2 that is 4.45 uh, mm and u3 is equal to 9.467 value of u1 is 0 because uh, first node is a fix and we consider displacement at first node that is 0 okay now we have to find out stresses in element we already uh, derive equation of stresses so equation of what is the equation of stresses that is sigma 1 is equal to e upon l1 minus 1 1 u1 u2 okay so we have value of e we have value of length of element and we uh, find out value of u1 and u2 so put all the value over here and find out value of element stresses so e upon l1 now uh, multiply first row and first column so minus 1 into u1 plus 1 into u2 so minus u1 plus u2 put value of u1 and u2 over here and e and l1 value over here and you can find out the value of sigma 1 that is 2546.8 newton per mm square same way same uh, using same equation we have to find out stresses at the second element that is sigma 2 is equal to e upon l2 minus 1 1 u2 u3 
in element 1 we use u1 u2 because element 1 uh, mounted between node 1 and 2 and in element 2 we use u2 u3 because element 2 mounted between node 2 and 3 you have to remember this thing ok now multiply first row and first column e upon l2 in bracket minus u2 plus u3 put value u2 and u3 over here and find out element stresses at sigma 2 that is 4002.4 newton per mm square Okay, so this is the uh, element stresses for both the element. In this numerical, we have to find out one of three things. First one, uh, nodal displacement, we already find out. Second one, element stresses, we already find out. Now remaining only one thing, that is reaction forces, that we have to find out. So last one, that is reaction force at support. Now only one nod is fixed. That's why only one reaction force we have to find out using this equation. Whatever number of row we remove, we have to use uh, that row and find out value of R. So from this matrix, if we have to find out value of reaction force, at that time, we have to multiply first row with first column is equal to R. Okay. So what is the first row? 10 raised to 4, that is the common value in bracket, first row and first column, 15.71 U1 minus 15.71 U2 plus 0 into u3 is equal to r. Now put value of u1 u2 over here and find out value of r that is minus 700 into 10 raised to 3 newton means that is minus 700 kilo newton that means our example is 100 percent right because we apply 700 kilo newton force in positive direction and we find out a uh, reaction force as a minus 700 kilo newton that means uh, the displacement of each node is we find out correctly okay so this is the numerical number one using elimination approach but in this numerical only one end is fixed in next session we solve one numerical based on two ends 